Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, or good night in some areas as well. Um, we welcome you to our first session for the presentations of the technical committee's work of the last year uh, of the International Sea Testing Association. I would like to give you a few um, information first. Uh, the most important thing um, as an um, attendee or as a you are muted um, by default. Uh, we will have um, two sessions um, and a break in between, which is a question and answer session. So for the question and answer, all attendees are asked to give their questions in the Q&A box, and they will appear at one of the organizers' side, and we will address these questions in the question and answer session to the presenters. Um, that is actually all from my side, and I would like to turn over to our president, Steve Jones from Canada. Hello, everybody. I'd just like to welcome you all to this uh, first virtual technical committee activity reports uh, online for everybody, which um, I know is uh, going to be a bit different. But we really wanted to make sure that the membership knew and the technical committees had the opportunity to share their work. Uh, the technical committees and uh, the very important part of ISTA and provide a lot of help and support to everybody. So it's uh, the opportunity for the chairs of the 20 technical committees and working groups to present their work to you. So we really appreciate them um, getting up at the different time zones and uh, working on to contribute to, to make this for you. So thank you very much for that, Andreas, and I'll hand over to you as the moderator and the first presenter. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Steve. Um, our first presenters are coming from the Advanced Technology Committee. It will be Bert van Doen and Bert Bold, and I hand over the um, audience to you. Please, all others, mute and switch off your cameras. Thank you very much. Okay, so the sound is okay like this. Then I can share the screen. And it should all work. Okay, this is the uh, presentation of the Advanced Technologies uh, Committee. And it's, um, as already announced, uh, a duo presentation. So I will give the first uh, introduction uh, to the activities uh, we had uh, in the in the last uh, period that will be short and after that uh, Bip de Boult will uh, give a report uh, about the activities in the uh, ISTA special uh, project on um, imaging technologies in other sheet uh, determination um, so that will be a more technical uh, report so the uh, Advanced Technologies Committee is um, um, nicely spread over the, over the globe. Um, we have 15 members from uh, 13 countries, and uh, we also uh, currently have some people that are not member of the committee, but still uh, are participating in uh, working groups that we have. So that's a nice uh, development. And, that's also something we really welcome uh, that other people from other committees or outside other committees will join us in uh, working groups to uh, to help us to uh, to do our work. Um, so the aims, uh, I always share the aims because uh, I think it's important and it's also important that if we all together think that the aims should be adjusted a bit so that, that we can do so. Um, but in, in short, the aim of the Advanced Technology Committee is to look at new technologies, to look at new opportunities um, for seed testing. Um, this can be very advanced uh, technologies, but this can also be new technologies that uh, are 
uh, not very advanced, but um, are used in other fields, for instance, and that may become uh, useful for seed testing. Current, uh, we are working on different uh, issues in, in working group. Um, the X-ray uh, based technologies is an ongoing uh, uh, project um, and we split this in two dimensional and three dimensional X-ray and we plan uh, to have an update on uh, these technologies and specific applications uh, in the next uh, period. We almost finalized our uh, analysis of um, the possible role of nanotechnology in seed testing and uh, we expect a report uh, for this uh, also very soon. Multispectral imaging is um, a technology that's becoming more and more uh, used in uh, seed testing and seed research. So um, you will see also some examples of that in the uh, ISTA special project presentation uh, by Pirte. Um, we working on analyzing the role or the potential role of mathematical modeling in seed testing. So we did a big inventory um, the last uh, year. Um, we also sent out an um, survey to the, the members, uh, which gives us direction um, on different possibilities to use modeling in seed testing. Um, based on this um, direction, uh, we will continue to uh, make a nice overview of um, what modeling can, uh, can do in, in seed testing. The um, X-ray chapter in the in the handbook already is for a long time on our list. First, together with the uh, forestry and shrub uh, committee, um, this was not developing really uh, quickly. Um, but now, uh, new uh, initi initiatives are taken uh, to uh, revise this uh, handbook, and a working group is uh, is started together with the purity and the uh, have to see uh, to to take this and also members of uh, ATC will take part in it. An important uh, aspect of ATC is the organization of workshops and seminars. In the past we had uh, very successful uh, workshops and uh, we're really uh, eager to continue that. Um, I will say a little bit more about that later and members of ATC participate in um, executive committee working groups like the uh, ECOM, TCOM functioning group and the science and technology group. As we know, ISTA is um, uh, really moving forward um, and this also finds its way in the funding of ISTA special projects and ATC is actively participating in three of these, uh, these projects. One is the new technologies for other seed determination. A report on that will follow uh, very soon. Um, there is a project on the assessment of all available technologies of imaging and image analysis uh, for other seed determination, purity analysis and germination. This um, project is uh, ongoing and reports are expected soon and then recently uh, started a new project in uh, last January and that's about the exploration of methods for detecting insects and seed lots and a report on that uh, will be given um, with the seed health committee and already a lot is going on uh, in this um, this project then the workshop and seminars. So we really were uh, very enthusiastic about organizing workshops and seminars. We had very nice workshops and seminars uh, in the in the last years. Um, we organized a workshop on seed imaging in Italy um, last year, and of course this had to be cancelled. Um, but we are really determined to uh, let this happen. So uh, as soon as this is uh, possible again. We will uh, announce uh, this uh, this workshop uh, in uh, in Italy. So that's something we're all looking forward to. 
Then I think uh, I will hand over um, the presentation to Birte Bult. Uh, she is um, the project leader of the uh, ISTA special project 19.2, New Technologies for Other Seed Determination. The project is running now for maybe one and a half year, and already a lot uh, has been achieved. And Birte will give you an update on um, what's going on. I Thank you, Pat. Change this, I will mute my microphone then. And Thank you, Pat, and hello, everyone. This project has an aim to explore the possibility of using multispectral imaging for other seeds determination, and there are two parts. One is the image acquisition and exploratory data analysis, where we use the software uh, with the instrument that we are using. And the other part is data analysis and algorithm development, which is run by one of our engineers. And part of the project is to have discussions of the results and further progress between the ADC and the purity committee. And I should mention that the partners in the project is Gerada and Dot from the Purity Committee, and it's Aurelie, Bert, and I from the Advanced Technology Committee. And then we also have an aspect of discussions of how this technology and the results that we have obtained can be used uh, to meet the needs in the seed sector. So I think Bert have to shift for me. Yeah. The starting point from our project has been to use some of the samples already used in proficiency tests. So we have got access to five test sets that you'll see on the screen here. There are two in grasses, one in white clover, one in uh, oilseed rape, and one in sunflower. And it is primarily the members from the project who have been able to provide us with samples. So we have approximately between, we have something between 4,000 and 6,000 seeds of crop seeds for each of the three seed lots. And then for each of the wheat seeds, um, or wheat species in the lots, we have between two to five seeds. So it's a fairly limited number of wheat seeds, but relatively high number of crop seeds. And for each of these tests, we have, of course, the photos that came out to the members when you started the, the testing. And then we also have the summary reports. We have been lucky enough that these reports have been available with the help of the ISTA office and also DDA. And one thing I wanted to point out to you that of these, for example, in seed lot number one, we have very different retrieval rates. And these are the ones that we want to, to compare with. And one of them, which is low, is the Medicaid Lupulina. So I already saw Andrea, so I have to speed up a little bit. Can I have the next slide, please, Bert? And you have two minutes. Thank you. Part of the exploratory data analysis you will see here where we have, in fact, the standard image, the RGB image from the equipment, and we have pointed out the different wheat species that are in there. For example, if you look at Synapsis alba, there are four seeds of that wheat species. And then to the right, you will see the transformed image where the Synapsis alba are in the yellow ring. And maybe you are able to see that they have dark blue signatures. So that is, in fact, the way that this software distinguish between the different species. Next, please. And then we also have the classification that should that is leading on to building the algorithms. So there you will see the whole process of the preparation of the seeds. We use different light emitting diodes and we have different files with information. So we extract the features that we use. And then the idea is to build algorithms that will distinguish between the crop seeds and wheat seeds. We have already done the first set of images, but they were not really 
they didn't have the optimal focus. So we are doing a second set. And this is, a, I think this is a consequence of the corona that we have been working in terms and people have been working from home. So we were, we were too late to see that we didn't have the right focus. We didn't see it until we had all the images taken. But we are in the process of doing the second round. And then we are also doing uh, images for we feasibility tests where we use the weed seeds that had the lowest retrieval rates and see how the technology will perform, perform on those. So next, please. So what we still have outstanding is the accuracy of the classification between the crop and the weeds and also the discussion about the results between the ATC and the purity and very important also to see how this can be used in the seed sector once we have the final results. So this is to come and it will be coming during this year. And we have also discussed plans for it. And this is my final slide that we have produced a publication where we have reviewed papers where multispectral imaging is being used either in seed testing or in research. And we see that, for example, in physical seed quality is where we have the most activity. We have 16 papers, which is, is also the area that we are working with here. In relation to germination, Vika, there are seven papers, and in seed health, there are seven papers. So there are activities in this field of using multispectral imaging. So I think this was all for me to give you an update on this project. Thank you. Thank you, Bert and Birte. That was um, very informative. And uh, if you have more questions, we have the question and answer session at the middle of this uh, meeting scheduled. Um, so if you have questions, please let us know on the question and answer box. I am handing now over to the Bulking and Sampling Committee and Eddie. Uh, the floor is yours, Eddie. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. I hope you can see my screen and uh, hear me clearly enough. I'm going to present uh, the activity report of, of the BSC uh, for 2000 and a bit of 2001. It's going to be a short report. We haven't been that active uh, this year. Uh, just a reminder on uh, the committee members. Uh, uh, we have uh, 15 members at the moment uh, from all over the world. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, we could not have uh, many meetings this year, uh, but we had some uh, virtual meetings, uh, one just uh, last week. Um, <clears throat> so for the rule changes uh, that uh, uh, the ESA membership is going to vote on uh, uh, very soon, uh, most of it is editorial, so I'm not going to go into the detail of that. Uh, then we added some uh, <clears throat> descriptions uh, of the mecha uh, mechanical dividers or just elaborated a bit on that. So the one that uh, <clears throat> had the most comments uh, was the one for the burner divider. Um, I hope you can see this. Uh, one of the questions that we got was uh, what's the difference between a space and uh, a channel. So if you look uh, at it from the top, uh, <clears throat> you'll see uh, there are some channels, uh, usually 18, or actually, uh, as far as we can gather, all the Bernoulli dividers has 18. So there's every alternate one here is a channel, and in between it is a space. So together, there are, uh, there's 18 channels, there's 18 spaces, and then there would be um, uh, 36 altogether openings uh, through which the seed falls. So it's arranged here. So the seed would fall there onto the cone where it's diverted and um, uh, some would go in the channels and some um, <clears throat> fall through the spaces into that uh, funnels and then it would 
be uh, collected in the two uh, pans over there. So this is just a close-up picture, not very clear, unfortunately, but there would be uh, the space and there's a channel and there's a space again and on that side uh, uh, there's a channel. So there's a channel space, channel space and so on. Another um, <clears throat> uh, rule change proposal is the storage of samples. It's just a, a small insertion of C uh, 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 chapters uh, two and three, the relevant um, uh, rules in those chapters. And uh, one other change that we made is to move uh, Salvia Hispanica from table 2C part 3, which is the flowers and herbs and spices, to uh, table 2C part 1. Because um, uh, Salvia Hispanica is a more agronomic crop, it's used for food and it's produced in uh, big volumes and so on. So uh, we, uh, because such high volumes are produced, uh, we need uh, bigger seed lot sizes. And uh, then um, <clears throat> uh, part one makes provision for that. Sampling workshops. Uh, so uh, we plan to have two sampling workshops this year. But uh, unfortunately, uh, due to the uncertainty about uh, travel restrictions and things like that, all of them has been postponed until 2022. So we're planning to have one in Denmark in uh, around April, May, and another one in Turkey uh, around October next year. A uh, special project that we're working on is the ISTA sampling calculator. Uh, so um, it has been launched uh, already last year, uh, but this year uh, we um, had uh, <clears throat> uh, it translated into several languages, and I want to thank all the translators very much for that. Uh, so we will continue with that until everybody uh, that wants to have it in their language have. Uh, uh, access to that. So it's already available in 14 languages. So if you look at the list there, so already available in Afrikaans, uh, Arabic uh, since yesterday, Danish, Dutch, English, French, Italian, Polish, uh, Portuguese uh, from Brazil, uh, Russian, uh, Slovak, Spanish, Swedish, and Turkish. Uh, on average, there are about uh, 650 active users every month. It uh, varies, but uh, some months more, some months uh, less. It depends on um, <clears throat> the season, I suppose. The top five languages uh, of the, the last nine months, uh, English. Uh, so more than half of the people uh, use the language in their own language, uh, if English is not their language. So the uh, next one is uh, in Polish. Uh, Poland, uh, they use it quite a lot, uh, followed by Spanish, Italian, French, and uh, then the rest. So the further development uh, <clears throat> we had to do to the app is to make provision for right to left languages like Arabic. Uh, so uh, uh, we had to change everything around because uh, you read it from right to left and uh, uh, that it was quite a, a procedure to uh, get that done. Sampling videos, uh, uh, we're still working on it. Uh, we're planning to shoot uh, quite a number of more uh, different sampling uh, videos. Currently, there are, there are seven um, available, so uh, <clears throat> we could not travel and shoot and so on during this uh, past two years but uh, we are already planning to have it next year. So in questions and answers, um, we had uh, received the 44 questions and answered them uh, in 2022. So that is my short presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be here for questions. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Chair, as well.
<laughs> because we are the chair of the <laughs> parking and sampling committee. Thank you, Eddie, for your nice presentation and short presentation. I would like to hand over to the flower seed committee represented by Rita Seginelli. Rita, please. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, and if you start your presentation, then you can run through it uh, as normal. Okay. So, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rita Zecchinelli. I'm the chair of the Easter Flower Seed Testing Committee, and I'm happy to present to you our activity report 2020. So, this is the composition of our committee. As you can see, we, uh, it's, we are uh, not all, but most of us are ladies and are coming from many part, different parts of the world. You can see that we have 13 uh, members and uh, you might know that in ISTA the standard, the standard composition is made up by 15 people. So if you are interested, we have still the, the possibility to welcome new members, new colleagues, so if you are interested in, in our activities, please uh, con keep in contact with us. The aim of our committee are, yeah, are the same, uh, you can see them uh, on the screen, but mainly uh, our first product is uh, the ISTA handbook on flower seed testing, and then we'll speak a little bit about this later on. But uh, we are also uh, in, interested and uh, active, let's say, in uh, um, uh, seeing the possibility and to work in order to add new, spe new flower species into the Easter views. And uh, of course, we are, we, we are also available to improve methods, uh, sampling and testing method for flower species, for species that are already in the, in the views. And we are available to provide guidelines and organize workshops and other training activities whenever it is possible. Uh, the flowers, you, we say we speak about flowers, but indeed it's, it's not only uh, the, the, the kind of species we are working on. We, there are special tables dedicated into the rules to the flowers, and not only to the flower, as I was saying, but also to the spice, herb, and medicinal species. In particular, there is a, a table in chapter two regarding the sampling, table to see part three, and in chapter five, table uh, five A part three. <clears throat> So in 2020, we have, mail, we have been busy on three projects, let's say. One was, the first one was the completion of the second Eustoma validation study, then the publication of the second edition of the East End Movement Flowers, and the organization of a proficiency test. Uh, Eustoma, so Eustoma exaltatum, exaltatum or Lysiantum is a new species. It was introduced in the Easter Rules in 2019, and now we have it listed in, uh, in the different tables of the different uh, chapters. And uh, so why we wanted to, to, to carry on a second validation study for this species, it was because we wanted to add a new, an additional germination uh, method. The first study was uh, organized in 2016-17, and the results uh, were, vote, uh, were voted in 2018, and we have this new species since 2019. The conclusion of this first study was the only one uh, method based on the alternate, alternate, alternate temperature to 20, 30 degrees had acceptable repeatability and reproducibility. The other two methods, uh, included in the study, the 20 centigrade and 25 could not be added, um, could not reach the same the same re good results. So with the with this second study, it, we wanted in particular to come back and, and check the possibility to add in particular the 20 centigrade method in the studies. This is because uh, expert laboratories, expert for this species, particular from Japan they were using the 20 centigrade uh, method and the same method was also listed is also listed in the AOSA testing rules and also growers of uh, these species are using uh, this kind of temperature 
and um, also we we noted that the, um, the the first study was not successful for this method only because one laboratory let's say and so we organized a second validation study the organizers was Shitska from Japan from Sakata Seed Corporation with uh, her colleagues and of course in comparison with our uh, committee and the germination committee and uh, so you see on the slide some some details about uh, the study and uh, I want to to go to the conclusions all laboratories have provided comparable results the 20 centigrade method provided results in accordance with those produced with the standard method and the results average percentage of normal seedling repeatability and reproducibility are all acceptable for this reason we are presenting this year the ARIUS proposal to add uh, the, um, the, um, an, an, an additional germination method for Eustoma exaltato, exaltatum in table 5a part 3. Okay, so um, we also have been working in order to publish the second edition 2020 of the ISTA handbook on flower seed testing. This, this project is chaired by Zita Ripka from Hungary and uh, yeah and um, yeah it was such uh, a long work to uh, achieve this uh, publication at, at the end also because we had we had to to um, compare our publication with uh, what, what was published already published and, and what we wanted to to have in the new one with the new uh, ISTA list of stabilizer plant names so finally this uh, second edition uh, was published and it is uh, as an electronic downloadable and printable PDF copy only and it was distributed to the ISTA members and it is available for those who are interested uh, on the ISTA website. So um, uh, this is the list of uh, genus, genera or uh, species uh, of the uh, working sheets that are included in in the um, new edition, and the 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 the, um, the ones the ones highlighted in yellow are the new the new one. So the handbook is composed by some general chapters dedicated to a glossary, to uh, information about uh, seed testing of flower species and so on, and then uh, uh, on, it's composed by uh, sheets that are dedicated to one single species or to a genus. And this is the list. Now we have 62 working sheets in it. Sorry, I made I did some mistake. So if you if you were familiar with the previous version of the edition of the handbook, maybe you could note that, that in the new one is uh, the, the sheet dedicated to verbena species is not anymore there. I want to inform that uh, there is nothing wrong. There was nothing wrong with these uh, sheets. It is still um, possible to use it. The information uh, reported there is absolutely correct. But there was there was there was yeah some problems related to the new nomenclature. So species nomenclature has changed with the last list of stabilizer plant names, and therefore we prefer to to delete it for the moment and uh, to to re review this part of the of the of these sheets and to include it in the next um, release we will have in the in the future. And um, yeah, so I also want to remember that the Flower Seed Testing Committee is cooperating with the Proficiency Test Committee and organizing a, a proficiency test round every three years on a flower species. So in 2020, um, again, Zita Ripka from Hungary organized, was the organizer of, of, um, of this proficiency test on Felicia uh, species. It was about germination. And uh, yeah, Fe Felicia is, is also a new species in the Easter Rules. It has been introduced, in, included in 2019 together with the um, Eustoma exaltatum. We have uh, yeah, spoken before. So you can see um, some results of the, of the germination ratings um, achieved by accredited labs and voluntary labs 
uh, in this uh, in this round and we were happy to see that more than one 100 laboratories uh, participated it means that also, also not a laboratory not accredited for flower species uh, were participating as voluntary in this uh, um, in this round so at the end, uh, yeah, I forgot to say that uh, something that our committee it has a kind of horizontal um, interest, and this is the reason why we are often cooperating with other um, ISTA committees, in particular the Germination Committee, but not only the Purity Committee, the Bucking and Sampling, the Tetrazolium Committee, and so on. In special, in particular, when we want to work on new species or to produce new working sheets for the hand. With this, uh, I finish my presentation. I want to thank the members of the committee for their work, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Rita. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. I will hand over now to the storage committee. You, Pritchard and Jayanti Nadarajan, please um, go ahead with your presentation. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Jayanti Nadarajan. I'm the chair of the Seed Storage Committee. I will do a brief introduction of the committee's membership list, and then we'll give a brief update again on the activities, then pass it on to Hugh Pritchard, who will be presenting on the uh, seed aging and seed vigor. So these are the current active members of the committee. We are internationally represented but we have only 11 active members currently. So we're looking for four additional um, members and we are welcome any applications. If you're interested, please get in touch. Next slide, please, Hugh. You got that? Yes, I do get it. Um, so I'm just going to go through briefly on the activities. Um, besides holding our quarterly meetings, the main activities is now focused on the seed storage handbook writing. We have organized the chapters and authors currently, and the writing is uh, taking place. Uh, we've been successful with the ISTA special project funding applications for the project entitled the use of ERH measurements for determining the moisture stages of store seeds. So this is in collaboration with the moisture committee. The project has just started. And we have represented ISTA uh, at the ICR IISS Mao India webinar on the seed quality assurance and scientific storage aspects last September. And we have also have collectively published around 21 peer-reviewed articles related to seed storage in 2020. Um, you mentioned correctly that there are open spaces in your committees, or in your committee, a storage committee that opens also the possibility for younger people to join the committee, um, you know, may know that ISTA has this initiative, Young at ISTA, um, to allow younger people also to um, take their role and find their role inside uh, the association. Maybe that is a good chance for younger people to um, also apply for this one of these open positions. I hand over now to the Germination Committee, and uh, Gillian Musgrove is representing it. Uh, Gillian, um, please go ahead with your presentation. Hi, I hope everybody can hear me and see my screen okay. Um, hello to everyone and welcome to the ISTA Germination Committee presentation looking at the activity over the last year. I am Gillian Musgrove, the current chair of the Germination Committee. So the outline for today is I will give you some details on the Germination Committee membership rule proposals we have put forward, some with method validation studies and some without, some of the method development work we are currently working on, information on proficiency testing during 2020, information about our workshops that have been delayed, details of our Germination Committee open meeting and finally our acknowledgements. So here we have the members of our committee 
The Vice Chair is David Johnson, who is very knowledgeable and provides me with lots of support. Um, David and Sylvie de Curnow are usually my first port of call when issues arise, so many thanks to them. We increased our numbers of um, members of the committee to 17 at the end of 2019, and I have to say a huge thank you to all members. We're all very active and everyone's contributions are much appreciated. Unfortunately, we lost two members during 2020 due to changes in their jobs, Pernilla Anderson and Lucille Duron. Both were very active on the committee and I would like to acknowledge their contribution. We now have two vacancies we wish to fill. The committee deal with many emails and have met several times using Teams over the last year and we hope to carry on this in the coming year and hopefully meet up. So moving on to rules proposals, we have four proposals that have method validation studies to accompany them. The first is a new germination method for Kinopodium quinoa carried out by Leslie Gonzalez and Ignacio Aranciaga. This has been a long time coming as it's the second attempt at method validation study. The first study had problems, but this one shows good, repeatable and reproducible results. We very much hope the proposal is successful as we receive many requests for the best germination method, as this is now an important food crop. The proposal is for the method to use the top of paper or between paper method, 20 degrees Celsius, the first count at four days and the final count at seven days. The next proposal was carried out in conjunction with the Flower Seed Committee by Rita Zeconelli and Shishka Takuchi for the addition of 20 degrees Celsius for Eustoma exaltatum. Rita has already explained about this in her presentation, so thank you, Rita. We now move on to the rule proposal regarding adding CREP cellulose paper, abbreviated to CCP, as the top of paper method for Glycine Max. This work was carried out by Sarah Damon and David Johnston. For background information, CCP was added for Zia Mays in 2020 under the column Additional Advice in Table 5A, allowing CCP to be used as the TP method. The steer from the ECOM with this proposal was to add this information to Additional Directions column of Table 5A to give clearer information. The reason for this method validation study is that the cellulose crep paper, sorry, the crep cellulose paper um, has been used routinely throughout North America for a long time, but TP, top of paper, was not in the ISTA rules for Glycine Max. By adding CCP as the top of paper method allows harmonization with the AOSA rules. Other TP methods would not be suitable for Glycine Max or ZMAs as there would not be enough moisture for the germination process. Finally, for method validation studies, we moved to the proposal to add agar as a sub substrate for the germination of Pinus sylvestris, but only for this species. This work was carried out by David Johnston. The current substrate is top of paper, so we hope to add agar as an additional substrate. This is an exciting step for germination, and the addition of agar is a good way forward. It may also help with image analysis in the future. I also hope that we may progress with adding agar to further species if this proposal is successful. As with all method validation studies, there are many people to thank the test leaders, the sponsors of the seed, the participants, the reviewers, the statistics committee and the other committees we work with, mainly Flower Seed Committee and Forest Tree and Shrub Committee. Nadine at the ISTA Secretariat for her help and guidance and of course the Germination Committee who always provide excellent knowledge and information from the test plan onwards. So now we move on to rules proposal without method validation studies. Regarding the top of paper method, we decided to remove the word upright as this suggests that if you put the top of paper into the upright position, the seeds would fall off. Um, upright is better for the between paper method. For the seedling abnormality criteria and the rules, we suggest adding a new code for allium species, code 32 stroke 07, this refers to the cotyledon as decayed as a result of primary infection in allium species. 
finally, the Bulking and Sampling Committee have a proposal to move Salvia Hispanica to Table 2C Part 1, Agricultural and Vegetable Crops, as Eddie has mentioned. Therefore, if this proposal is accepted, then there would be a consequential change for germination moving Salvia Hispanica from Table 5A Part 3 to Table 5A Part 1. We also have a couple, couple of editorial changes. The first is to correct the name of Hordium vulgari subspecies vulgari in Table 5A Part 1. It did not get updated previously, so it's still in Table 5A as Hordium vulgari. And the next is to have more consistency in the rules with the symbols used. In Section 5.6.1 of the rules, where there is the proportional calculation, the proposal is to change from using the colon sign to using a forward slash to denote division. This would allow us to have more consistency in the rules. This is already used in the moisture chapter. So, moving on to some method development ongoing in the committee. I am delighted to say that despite the difficulties over the past year or so, the Germination Committee have been able to carry on with both rules proposals and method validation studies. The slide shows some examples of ongoing method development work. For example, Sylvie de Curno and Lucy Rubino are leaders of a method validation study looking at the addition of 20 degrees Celsius for anethum graviolins. Currently in the rules, the permitted temperatures are 2030 and 1030. The seed is now with participants for testing. Vladislava Gregorova has been progressing with the method validation study looking at adding 2030 for Papaver somniferum. The current permitted temperature is 20. I would like to thank Vladislava for her patience as this has been delayed, but finally we're progressing with it and the test plan is currently with reviewers. Aidan Hamidi has been working on preliminary germination methods for camel thorn. And from these results, we hope we may be able to carry out a future method validation study. The committee is also involved in several special projects, but I do not have anything to report at the moment. Alison Powell will give you some information during the Vigor Committee presentation. Now looking at proficiency tests, germination was involved in all of the proficiency tests in 2020. I know Didier Dumele will give you the full details during his presentation shortly. I think it's really important to thank the organisers of each round because each one is a big job. I was involved in one of them, would like to thank the staff in my lab, but also the suppliers of the seat. But most importantly, I would like to say a huge thank you to both Didier Dumele and Branka Opera for their help, advice and most of all patience. They were both stars and despite one difficulty after another, they were there to help ensure the task was completed. So thank you to both of you. Thanks all to the Germination Committee for their input where questions arose from the membership regarding proficiency test results. And well done to the membership for their participation in difficult circumstances over the last year. As we're all aware, various workshops had to be postponed. We're really keen to get back into discussion about when we may be able to arrange, rearrange, but this is difficult until tra travel is possible and vaccines have been rolled out. But we just want you to know we've not forgotten about them. We would like you to join us on Tuesday the 8th of June, 4 p.m. CEST for our germination open meeting where all our method validation studies will be presented in greater detail. Sylvie de Curnow will also present findings from the comparison of temperature regimes used for pelleted and non-pelleted seed of Beta vulgaris, a follow-up to the ISTA proficiency test from 2018. There will also be a chance to ask questions. Details of how to register are on the ISTA website. Finally, I just have a few acknowledgements to make. Special thanks to the Germination Committee, the ISTA Secretariat, the Statistics Committee and all the other committees we work with for their support and guidance, the ECOM and our ECOM liaison officers, Sylvie de Curno and Ruel Gasmundo, and finally, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Gillian, for your nice presentation. Um, before we go into the question and answer session, 
We have one further presentation, which is not by you, but um, which is, no, we are going into the question and answer session now. Um, that is good. Uh, I would like to have all participants, all panelists on the on the line here, if you could come up. And if you have questions, please uh, put them in the question and answer box. So I don't have a lot of them here. Actually, I only have one, which is more going into another direction. Um, I could inform you on the availability of these sessions today and tomorrow on um, our YouTube channel. You may subscribe to the ISTA YouTube channel and will find all the um, both recorded meetings of today and tomorrow there and during the next days. Um, Jillian, you mentioned that there are open meetings of the Germination Committee. Your committee is not the only one which will have open meetings on the ESTA website. On, under upcoming meetings, you will find all the other um, technical committees which have open meetings, and you can subscribe to these open meetings. Uh, now I received a, a question. Um, about the statement after the prescribed period of six days, there are percentage of no normal seedlings. Are the percentage of normal seedlings to be extended period or before extended period must be wait? I think that is more also a technical question. Does anyone like to answer that? Um, well, generally, I would like to mention, um, Eddie mentioned it as well. When you have technical questions like that, uh, you can address them through the technical committees and you find the details of the technical committees on the ESTA website. Um, I think that would go for germination, I think. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure I was listening properly, but I think if at the end, I'm not sure if this is what it means. If at the end of the test there are seedlings that have not germinated, then they can be given extra time. If you think that there's dormancy or the seedlings um, have, you know, have not progressed to the correct stage, then the ISTA rules allow for this. But I'm not sure if I've actually answered the question or if I have. I also forwarded the question to you, Gillian, and you may be answering it then in a little bit more detail. Um, also in writing to the person who asked. Yes, if I if I get it in writing, then of course I will reply with a much better response. And I got another one which was about explaining the sunflower germination processing and that is also germination yes is this regard this could be perhaps regarding oh sunflower so last year with sunflower the rules changed so that we were allowed to have secondary roots um is that what this question is about? Probably yes. Yes. So what we have to be aware of is that the ISTA rules change, but the seedling evaluation handbook does not change. And we've been having discussions in the germination committee about how we can improve this. Um, because we are aware that the seedling evaluation handbook does not give the correct um, information. Um, as it's not updated annually alongside the, the rules. So we have to go with the rules and they, they tell us that with Helianthus last year for sunflower, there was a change and secondary roots were allowed um, instead of just a primary route. Hmm. I hope that answers. Um, thank you. I've got a question for biking and sampling. They're coming, they had a virginity test is quite complex and mostly not performed in the seed sector. Is there a simplified version of it? 
No. <clears throat> uh, if you want to find out whether a lot is homogeneous or not, um, you have to do the heterogeneity test. So, um, and the only way to do it is to take many individual samples from the required number of uh, containers. So, uh, you have to test many more samples. Uh, that's the only way that you can find out if there's a difference between the contents of one uh, container compared to the next one uh, in the same seed lot. So unfortunately, uh, not. Uh, it's already been uh, scaled down from a normal uh, test uh, where you test less seeds and test only certain uh, uh, components. Uh, or aspects of a, a specific test, uh, or what do you use for the evaluation uh, to check for the heterogeneity? Uh, so, and the samples are also smaller. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's what I can answer on that. Then uh, there's another parking sampling committee. Mean, uh, well, they won't be able to answer, but that's my answer. Okay. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, you, there's a question for you. Thanks for your presentation. What do you think the implications of your work are for using rate of germination as a bigger test? Well, I think they're potentially huge. Um, the, the question is whether they would ever be taken up by, by the industry, I suppose, as well. And we have some experience of working with a number of seed companies over the last um, seven years um, and you know I, I had feedback from them um, and it relates to two areas that I mentioned at the start of the talk um, particularly the maternal environment how important that is uh, and secondly you know the subsequent germination so one company said um, the collaboration improved our experimental and analytical procedures concerning germination under varying conditions and the impact of our cooperation um, is important as growth conditions uh, uh, on seed quality has the attention of various research and production departments. So um, that's the front end. And of course, the other end is having got past the worry of the maternal environment, germination performance subsequently. An another company said to us, this work has, marked a, uh, has had a marked effect on the reliability of establishment of the field, something which is holding back further economic development of the crop. Um, a financial value on the improvement goals we've achieved, we're not clear, but they are very significant. So I think there is huge potential here to work with uh, the um, with ISTA and with the C companies themselves to look at this type of quantification. Okay, thank you very much. I've got a short question for Steve Jones, who didn't present, but who has got um, new information on that um, because he was looking into it. Are there any information on the sampling handbook publication? So uh, th thank you, Andreas and, and Eddie and I and, and others within the Falkland Sampling Committee have been um, talking about the republication and release of the sampling handbook and uh, that progressing now again there have been some problems due to different things going on within people's life and also COVID but uh, we're looking forward now to um, be able to continue to work on that handbook so the the one of the last chapters is being reviewed at the moment and we, we have to be able to update people later on in the year about that I don't know if you wanted to say anything else, Eddie. No, no, thank you for answering that, Steve. Uh, I have nothing to add at this stage. Thanks. Maybe, Eddie, you have to add to the next one. Please explain about storage conditions to... Well, that is going to be also to storage. Storage conditions to carrot seeds, moisture percent of the carrot seeds and its effect on germination percentage. So that goes to anyone of the storage committee who would like to answer. Well, uh, I can have a go at that if you like. Um, 
moisture, of course, during storage has a profound effect on the longevity of the seed lots. Uh, and generally within the tree, um, the equilibration to maybe 30% RH is um, uh, the standard. Um, and that would mean that the seed lots are at um, probably 10 or 12% moisture. And that's actually quite wet um, in, in terms of uh, longevity. A little bit of further drying would enhance longevity quite significantly. Um, of course, one of the issues to, to consider here is that the equilibrium moisture of your seed depends on the oil content of the sample. And we don't seem to give a great deal of attention to the possibility, obviously with oil seeds, there might be a great deal of variability in total oil content between different seed lots. And that we treat all seed lots of what's been in exactly the same way. And in terms of longevity, that may not be the best option. Thank you. Um, that is germination here. Our question is related to the seedlings in the genus Allium porum. We would like more detailed explanation of formal seedlings and abnormality, it should be, especially related to knee on cotillion, regardless of that. We suggested to consider it more detailed explanation in ISTA rules and handbooks in seedling evaluation. Yes, um, after the proficiency test that was done um, earlier, um, which Didier will explain, there were some issues with the knee. So in the germination committee, we do hope when we're updating the seedling evaluation handbook to include this. One thing that could be done at the moment is after the initial the first count, um, it might be worth marking the um, substrate if you're using paper or whatever with a pencil to denote when there's a knee, because as the seedling elongates, the knee disappears. And if you don't have a lot of experience of this species, then often the knee is gone. So we would suggest the potential to mark um, the seedlings that have a knee so that further, further on, you would know that they've had a knee. But we are aware of this and, and we will um, look into this. Okay, thank you very much for that. I've got another question which I have to go for. On larger seed lots of grass seeds, are there are any plans to change the rules where approved companies have to continue checking 5% to 3%, that's in brackets, of a larger seed lot with heterogeneity testing? That goes to Eddie again. No, it's not under discussion at the moment. So, um, uh, this has. Uh, the methods are uh, in the ESTA rules in Chapter 2 on how to um, get yourself approved or a specific uh, seed processing plant approved to produce uh, larger seed lots. Uh, but uh, we, we're not discussing it at the moment, so we have not uh, received a request like that uh, up to now. Uh, but um, yeah, so uh, if they, uh, we can have a look at it, but um, uh, I think it's uh, okay as it is at the moment, uh, but uh, obviously people would like to test uh, less uh, samples. Um, I think uh, just three samples would not be enough to, to verify that uh, a seed processing plant can uh, adequate, adequate, uh, adequately uh, process uh, large seed lots. So we'll have to look at that. Okay, thank you very much. I see that our time is over. If your question was not answered, I forwarded it to the respective person and they might come back to you with an answer in writing on the Q and answer box. Thank you very much to all participants until now, for the first part of this session, um, 
we will continue with the second part and the first presenter in the second part of um, our afternoon session here for the technical committees is Axel Göritz and he is uh, the new chair of the moisture committee. Axel, um, you may go ahead with your presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, hello Andreas. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the question, first question, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, that was not the right button. So now you can see it, right? Um, yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, present the report of the Moisture Committee. And it's coming from Hamlin right now, even if it would have been much more fun to do it in the town of the Sphinx. Um, I'm sorry about that, but it's a common problem. Uniformity in seed testing, that is uh, the umbrella of everything we're doing. And uh, in the moisture committee, there have been changes in the last two years uh, was uh, transfer of the chair from Jette Needham to Laura Borden. And after half a year to me, uh, uh, that was um, the reason because Laura had other duties to do in her job. And uh, we are 12 members right now. And uh, Craig McGill is our liaison officer. It is uh, Tanya from Serbia and Ramesh from India, Selma from Turkey. I talked already about uh, Craig, uh, Celine from France, and uh, the former chair, or one of the former chairs, is uh, Jette uh, from Taiwan. Uh, it is Wendy and Baimolo from Zambia. As well, uh, a long member of the committee is Sergio from Italy and Gerarda from the Netherlands and Sue from the US and Fiona from Denmark. Um, seed universe, uh, how do you call it? Uniformity in seed testing. Uh, it was in 2007 when the low temperature oven method was declared to the reference method of the ISTA rules. Uh, in former time, it was uh, the Carl Fischer titration. And this reference method should uh, go um, in line with the high temperature oven method. And in many species named in uh, table 9A, uh, it is the case that the high temperature oven method has a good correlation with a reference method. And so comparative tests give the same result. But that's not always the case uh, in some species, for example, maize, the high temperature oven method doesn't give the same result as the reference method. And that's a problem. And um, the tendency is to get quicker methods without distracting the material tested. And another aim is to get uh, smaller uh, amounts uh, of seeds to be tested uh, for the sample. And that means that the main goal is to get moisture meters calibrated to, um, to uh, just to make the routine um, testing with moisture meters and the reference method just to re refer to it. So this is one aim of the uh, rules uh, of, the, of the committee and new species uh, as well as one aim to get new species in the rules. Uh, here, for example, Moringa oleifera. Uh, and one of the questions is, is grinding, grinding coarse or fine? or cutting necessary. Here you see uh, small tests uh, of different settings of the mill. Uh, so in this case, it is possible. And 
you have to make a validation study with a reference method or should it better be uh, the Easter method of a similar species? I switch back. Uh, that would, for maize, maybe me the often method. So you have to uh, keep in mind this. And if high temperature of method is desired, then comparison with the reference method is as well necessary. In case of high oil content, of the seeds, there's no high temperature often method possible because volatiles other than water will escape and that will result in a too high uh, water content shown. So there are many possibilities uh, of um, for the uh, validation study and information is needed before a study can be started. So the demanding lab should offer infos and data about the species and propose a method that's already in use somewhere. Another topic is the moisture handbook. The current handbook uh, is from the year 2007, so several years old. And the lead of this project group is Sue Alvarez and the group is installed and the work is in progress. Another pro project is equilibrium relative humidity. This, this, these two slides are from Fiona Hay, who is the lead of this group. And uh, to say it short, uh, uh, method is uh, measures the relative humidity in the air around the sample in the given temperature. And usually the test is relatively fast so 15 to 60 minutes, depending on moisture content and equipment. And it can be related to moist, seed moisture content through seed moisture isotherms. You see it at the next slide, but this uh, you have to take this with care. It is a non-destructive method, and so the sample can be used for further testing or returned to the bar. Widely used as this method um, already in gene banks or seed banks, and particularly useful for the following of the process of seed drying. Here you can see you can monitor the, uh, while the bright, drying period, the moisture content um, comparison to the seed equilibrium relative humidity. This special project it is a collaboration between the Moisture uh, Committee and the Storage Committee. Layanti said it uh, already uh, about an hour ago. And the objectives are mainly to gain an understanding of equilibrium relative humidity measurements in proposed species. So, for example, vegetables, flower seeds and tree and shrub seeds and to understand, uh, to, to get the, uh, the interest, uh, the level of interest, uh, if it's possible or useful or uh, uh, good to include it as an Easter method in the rules. As well, to develop and implement research to achieve reproducibility as well within the one lab uh, and across different labs uh, as well. So uh, maybe it could be given um, the development of proposal for further work based on the outcome of these objectives uh, could be uh, one uh, point. Uh, Fiona is always uh, also in, um, working uh, at Aarhus University with related projects, for example, treated seeds, um, and as well, uh, how the isotherm varies depending on moisture history, so cycles of drying and water uptake. And this is very important for the uh, calibration of samples, of 
for the testing of new methods. So uh, this is an important point for the committee. As well, rules changes are always a topic uh, to be handled with. And there was a question, how to report a seed moisture content if the species tested is in table 2C, for example, Abemoschus esculentus, but is not in table 9A. So you see here is a not in there. And the aim is to give a clear advice how to use and interpret the rules. And you see in blue the suggestion, or let's say the proposal from the moisture committee. Uh, if the species being tested is not listed in table 9a, but is listed in table 2c, the result must be reported according to 15222. Uh, I copied it in from the existing rules or from the current rules, and that says that the result must uh, be printed under other determinations. The method must be printed there. And the sentence, this method is not covered by the international rules for seed testing. And as well, an A must not applicable, must be entered in the moisture test results based on the ISTA certificate that is right here. And this is an example of producing a um, um, proposal that, uh, that's gone very well. That was a question long time before this Congress or this uh, annual meeting, and the Moisture Committee had time to discuss it. And uh, it was discussed as well with other committees and the TCOM, and as well the Rules Committee made uh, little changes, and we had time to discuss it again. And it was proposed, and there was no discussion about this. Uh, in the rules committee, and I'm pretty sure that it uh, in the in the rules session, and I'm pretty sure that this will be amended. So thank you for all participants from the whole committee, and thank you as well to the members of the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Axel, and. Um... As I see that your committee also is looking for new members, that's another approach from my side, also to invite the younger generation to apply for the membership there. And you're probably also looking for a vice chair, and um, that is something which the committee will probably do during the next um, weeks and months. Thank you for your presentation. We continue now with the presentation of the Seed Science Advisory Group. And I invite Alison Powell to that. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's nice to be able to speak to a large number of people again, even if we can't see you. And I hope that because you're listening, that means you're coming through this pandemic safely and that everybody's well. I'm going to start off my presentation by just running through the members of the committee again. Uh, we come from a wide range of countries, and I'd like to emphasize that we're all practical seed scientists. We want to see the research that we do being taken into practice. And because we're working with ISTA, we want to see that uh, research work is taken through possibly into the ISTA rules. A lot of research that is done suggests that research may be taken forward, but it, the researchers don't take it into practice. And we feel that is something that's very important to do. Now that is reflected in fact in our first term of reference, which is to work to link fundamental research and the use of that research to meet the needs of ISTA members. Now we've had a project running, which is the prediction of normal germination of commercial material. 
by a single radical emergence count. And we started this work in 2016, 2019, working with the germination committee and mainly with three species, Trifolium repens, Lolium perenni and Cucuma sativus. And in this case, everybody used the same test method during a germination test. And this work illustrated that there's a clear relationship between a single early radical emergence count and normal germination. Now we've continued that project and in the current triennium, we aim to extend the research to more crop groups. And first of all, we asked within the germination committee for volunteer participants. And we identified a number of possible species from different crop groups and asked the volunteer participants which species they thought would be useful to work on. Now, these participants were going to incorporate early radical emergence counts within their routine germination tests. We've never wanted to ask people to do extra work. So this is really sort of trying to merge a research project in with the routine work of the participants. Now here we can see the participants. We had Miriam from Israel, Linda from the UK, Sylvie from France, Gillian, the UK, Leslie from Chile, and Aidan from Iran. These are the species we selected. We had wheat, sorghum, pea, rocket, and pepper. And the different participants said which species they could work with. So you can see we've got five labs working with wheat, just three with sorghum and pisum, two with rocket and two with pepper. Now I have to say that because of the pandemic, things haven't gone as quickly as we might have hoped. I have had one set of results through to me from the wheat. I know two other labs have actually completed some work and I've had one set of results through for the peppers, but that is as far as we have gone at the moment. Now, in this term of reference, we were also encouraged to link to other technical committees. Now, we, so we were trying to work with the flower seed committee and the project here was to use tetrazolium chloride to predict the germination of wild species. And this was based on the research of Dr. Maria Mara, who was to be the leader of the working group. Now we consulted members of the flower seed committee who see who would be interested in participation and also what species they test. And we identified possible species, but we've had no further action so far. This is partly through not wanting to do undergoing pressure to complete routine work due to the limitations. We also approached the storage committee regarding a possible project to use an early count of radical emergence, either to predict storage potential in commercial seed storage conditions, or as a rapid assessment of germination during gene bank storage. But there was no interest expressed by any of the TCOM members. So that potential project has been put to one side. Now, the other thing that uh, we've been involved with in the past year or so has been to prepare a proposal for a possible new work, area work for ISTA. And this was to be initially considered by the ECOM. Now, the proposal that we prepared was a response to the fact that there's an increase in interest in more ecological emphasis in farming. There's also an interest in reducing chemical inputs. And there has been an increase in the market for biostimulant and biocontrol seed treatments. But there are no guidelines or general methodologies for evaluating these treatments on seeds. So in producing our proposal, we provided the background to these developments. And we questioned whether ISTA might have a new field of activity with development of biocontrol and biostimulant seed treatment assessment methods. And this will be part of its official mission to develop testing methods for the assessment of seed quality in ISTA labs. 
Now we proposed, we put forward this proposal to the ECOM in January last year with a suggested action plan. And there's been discussions with the ECOM working group on seed science and technology on two occasions since. As a result of our discussions, we decided to continue only with uh, the work, any work on biostimulants. Now this slide gives you a uh, part of the um, outline that we had for a work plan. As you see, we, as I said, we submitted our proposal in January 2020, and that was considered by the ECOM in the February meeting. We then had a few months where we were uh, prepared for feedback from the ECOM, which we had. As you saw in the last slide, we actually ended up discussing in June the questions that the ECOM brought forward. Now, from that point on, everything's been held up. Um, obviously, there could be no discussion with the designated authorities at the annual meeting in May. But the next steps, as you can see here, were really cons consultation with ISTA partners or stakeholders to see if they supported the idea of a development like this. And when that, if that was complete, and then they agree, they thought it was a, an appropriate action, we would discuss with the appropriate TCOMs about any further work, and then we'd move on to possible practical work. So where we've got to is that in September, the ECOM gave us a green light to continue. That was in 2020. In terms of consultations with ISTA stakeholders, the consultation has principally with, so far been with the EU. And their response was that plant biostimulants will be regulated under the fertilizing products regulation as of July 2022. And they say that treated seeds, not only with biostimulants, but also with fertilizers, come up for discussion only from time to time, but not very often. So that is the response from the EU, which perhaps doesn't sound very encouraging. So it almost seems to suggest they've also already taken it in hand. But we still have consultations with the other ISTA stakeholders to find out um, what their view is of a possible new area for ISTA. So that is something we'll be continuing in the next year or so, as we'll be continuing with our uh, project with Radical Emergence. So that really summarises what we've been able to, what we've been doing in the past year. So thank you to everybody, particularly the committee, the people who have participated with us in the Radical Emergence project, and of course to the Secretariat for all their support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alison, and thank you for the, the nice summary. And um, yes, things went a little bit more slow during the pandemic, also with uh, the discussions with the DAs, and I feel sorry for that as well. But um, it's important to have them on board because um, they have to agree with what uh, we do and if there is a need from their side to um, look into it as well. So we try to con uh, contact all stakeholders and um, get their ideas. But thank you to the SSAG for the excellent work. Uh, we now come to the next presentation, which is um, Didier Demelier uh, from the Proficiency Test Committee. Didier, please go ahead. Do you see my uh, screen or not? We see your screen. You see my screen, nice. Um, so, oh, sorry. So this is the report for the Proficiency Test uh, Committee, uh, focusing on 20, uh, 2020 with few information from uh, 2019. Um, I don't understand what happened. Oh, sorry. Okay. So first, the goals and objectives of the Proficiency Test Committee and uh, ISTA PT coordinators. Um, it is to prepare and distribute the PT samples to participants in good time and good condition for the standard PTs. 
and to timely analyze the laboratory test results. The program contributes strongly to the uniformity and to the proficiency in testing. It also serves as a monitoring tool for the performance of ISTA accredited laboratories. And uh, the program is also useful to identify the needs or training uh, and method improvements. Standard species uh, concern purity, other seed determination, germination, moisture, tetrasodium, vigor, issuing orange international certificates, and uh, for the first time in 2020, uh, thousands in weight. And to achieve this goal, we need a staff and first PTC's members and PT leaders. I have underlined four new members, Suzanne from Denmark, Irena from Poland, Monica from Slovakia, and Lynn since last week from Canada. We also uh, strongly cooperate with the ISTA Secretariat and particularly Branislava Opra. Uh, Branca is the standard PT coordinator, and uh, we have also a lot of relation with Florina Palada as head of accreditation and technical department. And of course, we are in close uh, um, contact with the TCOM uh, for uh, collaboration, collaboration exchanges for the program plan for follow-up action, question or complaints from the participants. Uh, this is the program plan since uh, uh, 2019. We are now on the, uh, on the realization of uh, ZM maize. Uh, the, the seed sample were distributed in April and we expect results on the 1st of July. And uh, then we will have uh, a new species. Not, uh, uh, initially it was planned Ulmus, but we will, we will change for Anus uh, glut glutinosa and uh, another uh, thing uh, noticeable Sharon Davidson uh, accepted to organize Spinachia oleracea in, uh, 20, 19, uh, in 2022 um, because uh, we um, Pernia lived the committee um, key data from, from the PT, uh, PTC activities uh, in 2020, we had four PT leaders preparing uh, two, more than 2,000 samples with uh, 36 heterogeneity tests performed and uh, uh, 15,000 yeah, 15, seeds were added in the sample for uh, USD tests. Additionally, 180 mixture seed samples prepared by the Purity Committee were also uh, shipped with a PT. Uh, the ISTA Secretariat prepares 648 packages and, also, and distributed also six, the same uh, name number, six, six, more than 600, 600 preliminary and final reports to the participants. The activity of the PTC represents about 1,600 emails each, each year. And uh, in 2020, we have to postpone some dates because of the pandemic. We made several improvements uh, uh, on the summary report, a new version of the PT procedure. And of course, uh, we prepare annual reports, heterogeneity results, summary reports, PTs, and OSD picture are, are available on the ISTA website, as uh, you have an example here on the, on the right. Uh, overview of the ratings in 2019 and 2020. Um, this is a global, first we have uh, the global uh, ratings uh, from uh, accredited laboratories and voluntary uh, participants. Uh, like the other years, uh, you can see that uh, uh, accredited laboratories uh, have uh, uh, more uh, high percent, higher percentage of A and B uh, results compared to the voluntary participants. On the bottom of the slide, you have more detailed uh, results showing per species and per analysis uh, the percentages of A, A and B ratings for uh, the laboratory, for the accredited laboratory, and from, for non-accredited laboratory. You can see that 
most of the non-accredited laboratory uh, obtain uh, less than 80 or uh, less than 90 percent of A and B rating, exception for three uh, PT for purity, and uh, accredited laboratory obtain uh, much more. Most of the results of the accredited laboratory are B, A and B ratings. Nevertheless, I will uh, I will speak a bit uh, more on uh, three uh, PTs and analysis. Uh, the OSD uh, result for Festucap retinsis with very low retrotribal percentage, uh, the germination for allium porum, and the result for the first uh, thousand seed white uh, PT. Oh, sorry. Um, this is the Festucap retinsis other seed determination uh, retrotribal percentage per species. Uh, there was 149 participants. And you can see that for several species, the retrieval rate was very low for Ordebum jubatum, Lolium sp, uh, Elimus repens, and Dactylis glomerata. Just I want to, to yes, just a precision. The retrieval rate is based on the genus level and not on, on the species level, meaning that the laboratory that answer Ordeum sp or on the Ordeum sativum has a good result, include in the 4% of uh, retrieval rate. Um, with a very low result for this PT, um, the assing factors, uh, which are uh, factors when the results are better than 90%, better than 85%, or, or uh, lower than 85%. So there was no factor only one factor of two for antoxantum odoratum, uh, giving some bonus for uh, laboratories who find uh, these species, but no more bonus for the other species. Um, more precise uh, results and comparisons. The four species, Lolium, Festuca, uh, Lolium, Elimus repens, Dactylis glomerata, and Ordeum jubatum was present also in a PT for Festuca arundinacea in 2017. You can see the decrease of the retrieval rates for these four species from 75% to 38% for lolium, from 66% for uh, Elytrigia repens because the, the, this seed changed name uh, to 38% and from 71% to 54% for dactylis, and 633 to 40% for Ordeum jubatum. Uh, I want also to precise that uh, for Elimus repens, there are several regulations in the European countries, Great Britain, USA, Canada, uh, who, where you can find this uh, species uh, with threshold of number of seeds in the regulation. Therefore, it is very important to identify Elimus repens at the uh, species level instead at the genus level or with another name. Um, nevertheless, former name Elytrigia repens is still present in some regulations. We, we study uh, more in detail the results. Uh, and so for Elimus repens, uh, 56 laboratories found this species with the two seeds. Only uh, 16 laboratories found only one seed. And uh, with eight laboratories, uh, answer as uh, Elytrigia repens or Elytrigia sp, Elytrigia SP uh, as results. And 69th laboratory didn't find Elimus or Elytrigia uh, seeds. This is the illustration you can uh, find on the ISTA website uh, with the reports. So we identified that uh, with um, uh, Roging, uh, with the purity committee, that there is a high need for training for these uh, species. Second example, allium porum germination. There was a difficulty to evaluate normal versus abnormal seedling because of these abnormalities. Here you have an example of a picture sent by a laboratory considering all those seeds as abnormal seeds. David Johnson, the vice chair of the germination committee, uh, made a manual uh, annotation of all the seedlings 
and a lot of seedling considered as abnormal by the laboratory were in fact normal for David. So uh, Gillian has already spoke about this topic that will be ended by the germination committee. Then allium porum uh, with the first thousand seed wet. You can see that the rating, uh, this it is, a, an, it is a, yes, we rated uh, accredited laboratories and voluntary uh, participants. So there was 135 laboratory, uh, participant laboratories. Uh, what uh, 106 participants use the replicate method and two, uh, 29 participants use the content of all the seeds. What is noticeable is that uh, we had very low standard deviation and uh, this probably creates high sensitivity of the set score. So we will need a validation of the statistical analysis uh, when we will do a second uh, TSW test. And uh, we need also to, uh, uh, to update the database, ISTA database to be able to include this new test in the PTs, uh, in the PTs analysis. The prospect are the preparation now are the preparation of the PT program plan for 2023 to 2025, as we will have to submit it uh, to the annual meeting uh, next year. And with the ISTA Secretariat, with Andreas, we spoke about uh, uh, preparation of a webinar in end of September of, or uh, October uh, this year, at the end of this year in 2021. I want to thank the PTC members, the PT leaders, the ISTA Secretariat and Technical Committees. And I have a special thanks for uh, Andrea de Schonitz, Bernie Anderson, Ho Jing Wang, who leave the committee. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Didier. Uh, nice presentation and uh, short. So that was um, as helpful for the time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, I would like to hand over the um, stage to the next presenter, which is uh, Gil Weibel. Uh, he is representing the Wild Species Working Group. Um, Gil, you uh, be telling, will be telling us some more interesting things, um, and we are looking forward to that. Gil, are you okay to start? Thank you. Can you can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Thank you, Gil. Thank you. So uh, my name is Gil Wabel. I'm chair of the uh, Wild Species Working Group, and the Wild Species Working Group is a working group made up of people from ISTA. Q, uh, the Millennium Seed Bank, AOSA, and SCST. Uh, how do I... And the uh, the uh, we have the members from ISTA are listed here. We have Dr. Rujing Wang, who's our vice chair, and Rujing was very helpful uh, last year when we were working on the programming of the project and. Uh, and has been a great sounding board for me. Dr. Allison Powell, uh, Rita Zeccanelli, Dr. Laura Bowden, Stephanie Kramer, Dr. Sergio Pesquini, uh, Dr. Joel Achape, and Craig McGill, who is our liaison officer. Gil, if you if you go into the slideshow, it may be easier for everybody. Oh, slideshow. Here Thank you. Go. Thank you. Okay, maybe, maybe it'll advance for me now. Um, we have uh, Rachel from Q. We have Rachel Davies and Ted Chapman who have been uh, involved. Uh, Riyad Balbaki and Victor Bankus uh, with AOSA, and Heidi, Heidi Larson and myself uh, with uh, SEST. So last year um, we did a lot of programming, and 
Uh, this is what the home screen looks like. Um, we have our logo up on the top of the screen here, TWS. And then we have um, links to ISTA, um, AOSA, Q, and SCST. And the nice thing about those links is you can click on those and go right to their websites as well. Um, so this is what the home screen looks like. We have um, a protocol area. You can look at that. We have nine protocols in there. They are not real protocols, uh, but they will show you what they will be looking like. Uh, we're working on uh, finding more efficient ways of setting up the protocols. They're very time consuming to put together at this time. Um, methodology, uh, there will be chapters. We have some of the chapters are posted. Others are in process of being written. Uh, we have a gallery which we're going to build of images for wild species as well as uh, that are sold as well as contaminants. Um, and uh, there's a glossary which is fairly complete. Um, I'm looking for some people who will be able to help us with images and and photos to help um, seed analysts understand what some of the terminology means. Um, the proto so I, I just talked about the protocol tab. Uh, we are building an algorithm. I'm calling it an algorithm here. I'm not sure uh, what the right term is for this, but uh, we're, we're trying to find a way to pull many pieces of information together from different sources to more efficiently and effectively put together our protocol sheets for each species. Uh, seedlings, um, uh, we're working on uh, normal seedlings of normal and abnormal descriptions as well as images and this will be family-based. Uh, if there are images of a normal seedling for the species in question, that can be entered uh, under the images down in that part of the protocol as well. Also with TZ, we're working on by a, on a family basis uh, viability criteria as well as images showing what that might look like. Um, the, it's um, it, when we can build this, it will greatly increase the speed it takes to set up the protocols. Um, so we have uh, we have uh, some units have been written for the methodology chapters. Uh, there's a good one that's written on on uh, germination testing. Uh, we have the moisture chapter is just about complete, um, and and we also have some uh, links. We have a link to ISMA. Uh, for helping with seed identification, as well as uh, some articles that were written uh, by Joe Jones, who um, uh, to help people uh, take picture, uh, better take pictures or images of seeds, and also doing photoshopping. Um, so the authors are busy. The chapters that I've had people sign up to work on are purity, um, germination, which I have said is complete at this point. Uh, tet tetrazolia moisture, it's almost complete, x-ray, um, uh, microcleaning, and then the seed ID, the link to ISMA, and then seed imaging. Um, now, these chapters are written to be added to forever uh, as we go forward. Uh, this is where we're try trying to do is get a good, good starting point. Just a few images that we uh, have for the website. Um, uh, we're uh, wanting to build this um, as quickly as we can, and hopefully we can get people from around the world to uh, help us uh, gather these images and build this gallery. The protocol or the gallery, the glossary has really come a long way. I chose fascicle as an example here. Um, so we have images uh, that Steve Hurst took a while ago of of uh, Sencris ciliaris. I took these. Um, the, the fascicle is this structure right here. The seed within it is not part of the fascicle. And I just thought it more definition of what we really mean by the term uh, is helpful. And, and then what we did is we pulled together definitions from varying sources. And it is actually helpful uh, when you look at different definition side by side uh, for people who maybe don't have a strong botanical background. 
Uh, it's been a difficult year working with this committee with COVID uh, for the authors and myself. Uh, we did lose some funds that we had committed uh, due to COVID. Uh, thanks to ISSA, we do have enough funds at this time. Um, I have a new job, which has been very demanding in my time, which has slowed my efforts in this project quite a bit in this last year. I'm trying to get re-engaged uh, to pick that speed up. Um, the website address, if you'd like to see what we have at this point, is wild-seeds.net. And uh, just drop that down, and it is live. You can go and see what we have there. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Gil, for that um, nice presentation. And I can only encourage all people to go on the website and um, have a quick look. Uh, I think it's um, it's an excellent job, and that's um, always a pleasure to work with you, Gil, and your committee, and um, to see what is um, growing in this um, this area. Last, not least, today we have a um, very short presentation, as you have seen now, also from Melanie Shorey, she's chair of the Nomenclature Committee. Melanie, good morning to you as well. Good morning. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, if you can change to the presentation mode, that would be even great. Well, I have it on full screen mode, but I have two I have two screens. Yeah, I think you can leave it like it is in that case. Okay. So our committee doesn't do a whole lot in years when there is not a new ISTA stabilized list. Um, our current membership includes myself as chair, Ernest Allen as vice chair. Members that don't hold chair positions are Susan Alvarez, Bernard Baum, Michel Chauvet, Alex Diedrichsen, Carl Hammer, Marco Hoffman, and John Wiersma. We could use more members, but one of the problems with membership is people really need to have some kind of background in plant systematics. Um, this is not a committee where you can join the committee and then learn how to do what the committee does. However, if there's someone who is interested in learning more about nomenclature, I am willing to train people so that they can become qualified to join the committee. So if you know someone who might have an interest, please ask them to contact me. Our activities in the past year consist primarily of answering emails from other committees. Um, we've received queries regarding updates to the ISTA universal list, which was not checked before the last stabilized list was produced. Um, name changes that affect the rules. I think with the current rule, rules proposals, we will have gotten all of the stray nomenclatural changes. Use of authorities and scientific names. This should also be addressed with some of the proposals to change the rules using synonyms on certificates and the appropriate level of identification. The only current project we have is to explore a way to add additions for new species that might be undergoing methods tests or need to be added to an appendix, which we discussed at the Congress in Hyderabad. But we don't have a mechanism for this yet, and we are still working with the ECOM to figure out how to do this. And that is all I have. Thank you, Melanie. In years where it is not so excited, <laughs> as you said, it's not a big report. But that's a report from your committee. Thank you very much. And I uh, would like to ask all panelists now uh, on the stage, please. Uh, here we go. 
I've got a few questions. Not that much. I have to go to the right ones. Uh, first one goes to, to Axel, to you. Um, will you arrange online moisture content determination workshops, presentations? Good question. Um, we got it on our agenda to try something in this uh, area, but there was no uh, time for the members and uh, for me not as well. Uh, to, to get in, in drive with it. So it is planned to give some advice per video uh, and maybe per workshop, workshop but uh, it would be a very new field. We didn't do it in, uh, in the past and I, uh, I don't know if it works. So okay. we should should try it with a little group maybe uh, within the committee yeah maybe some of you heard that we started to have online workshops as well with a um, sister tool of what we are using today which is go to training we used it for um, a test run uh, for QA workshop and for two real QA workshops um, and that was very successful so that is something you can think about and another thing is if you want to have just things spread out um, to the wider audience of of ISTA what Didier mentioned we will have a um, webinar with Didier and Branka to uh, talk about the proficiency testing give more information out there that is shorter and the go to training of course is um, is a longer thing than longer than an hour and a half or something like that mm. but the possibility is there and um, we could do and uh, do this and and use it up for for this purpose as well uh, i've got another question here coming which came up uh, which is and seed moisture test, will there not be any influence of the seed moisture test results due to polymer coating? Also a newer technique, now common in seed industry, will not the polymer interfere with the expression of actual moisture in the seed? If so, how to take care of this in seed testing and reporting? Very interesting question, Axel. Um, that probably goes to you, or maybe also, now maybe mostly to the, you than to the storage committee. I can say right away, I don't have an answer to this question, uh, but uh, I would like to get this question written and we'll try to get a feedback. I, for, I, I think you can see the forwarded yeah. questions as well. If you If you see that, on your your screen you can you can have it otherwise if you're interested i mentioned that again if you're interested to get answers on these type of questions also from the committees please contact them directly also via the website that is um, another easy way to to stay in contact with the the committees and the committee chairs uh, i've got another one uh, coming up uh, that is have to play always a little bit. Is there any method to predict the age of seed? In many life forms, plant animals, we can guess the age. For fossil, we do estimate the age, but for seed, is there no way to quantify the age in some extent at least? Maybe I can give a quick answer to that one, of course. Uh, like in all forms which contain carbon, you could do a carbon-14 age test which of course if it's a very young um, seed it is uh, doesn't make a lot of sense but um, uh, you can estimate quite well on older seeds how old the seeds are if you're going for a carbon 14 screening um, any information from you ladies and seed science advisory group maybe you can answer on that question well my answer would be that wouldn't predict the actual age 
but you can predict the relative age, which is older and which is younger physiologically by doing a controlled deterioration test or even an accelerated aging test for larger seeds. So that would only give you the relative age. But it can't give you the precise age, but your idea of carbon dating is a good one. Uh, Hugh here, yes, absolutely agree. Carbon dating is, is the best option for, to, to determine long-term stored samples. I mean, those measures have been made on seeds, of course, in June from the ground uh, and coming out at something like 2,000 years for the oldest. Thank you. Thank you, um, you for your comment as well. And thank you for confirming my long, long time ago scientific knowledge. Um, I've got another on the proficiency test system. Uh, when other seeds, other crops, weeds are involved after the results are reported by the lab and reviewed by ISTA, the lab should be educated about the correct names and those seeds not correctly identified by the lab. This will improve the lab's knowledge. Uh, did you any comment on that one? I think the right species are mentioned later on uh, on the ESTA website as well for all um, participants, right? Yes, the, the, the species are mentioned uh, in the report as, as I show an example. And um, there are also uh, some pictures of all the seeds with the correct uh, name uh, expected for each PTs uh, on the website. So if you go to the to the uh, PT section, uh, standard PT section, and then to the to the report section. You have all the reports for each PT, and for for uh, with for each PT, you have a, a report with the with the pictures and with all the name uh, for the OS, OSD. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, another one about the ISTA stabilized plant names, seventh edition. Now, Melanie, you had a short presentation, but it caught attention. Eruca sativa mill equals Eruca vesicaria subspecies sativa. Eruca vesicaria subspecies sativa, synonym Eruca sativa mill. And then the question comes somewhere here is uh what to be reported on the uh ISTA certificates i think you cannot answer that from just um, just me lis uh, just listening to that one um maybe again here you could come back to, to melanie also directly right so i don't actually fill out any certificates but my understanding of what is supposed to be on the certificates is the accepted name that is on the ISTA stabilized list. Yes. Okay. Maybe I need to quickly see that that one expands. Otherwise, I cannot read the next question. Here we go. Uh, we have found the name in using universal list, stabilized list of species in the rule are different of some species. Question, which one can be used for reference? Again, the name that should be listed is the one on the stabilized list, although there, every time there's an update, we get somewhat out of sync with the rules and the universal list because they're not always checked as thoroughly as they need to be. Okay, and I got another question for moisture. Is it possible to halve the sampling size from the customer if the laboratory use small containers, diameter five to eight centimeters for oven method? Okay, I, we got this question already, and uh, I think it has to be, uh, it is a question as well from the sampling point of view, and uh, we, we have, um, I think it's not, uh, it has 
to give at least the validation study about that. But we have to discuss it as well with the uh, biking sampling committee, I think, uh, because uh, reducing the sample size means you have to do the sampling in the company more, even more better. Uh, so uh, this, uh, I can't give a statement right now about that. Yeah, thank you very much. That is the end of the questions I have for you. Uh, I do thank all presentation, present, presenters of today uh, for their work and uh, letting us have a view into the work of their technical committees. I would like to hand over to Valerie Cockrell, who is the ECOM TCOM liaison person, uh, and give a few final remarks. Valerie, would you like to come up? So, hello everybody. Um, I would just like to once again thank all the pre presenters from the technical committees. They are um, very important. The technical committees are very important to ISTA, and I think we always say they are the workhorse um, of, of ISTA. So, thank you to everybody who's taken the time today to make their presentations um, i thoroughly enjoyed them and it's always interesting to see the hear the questions that are asked of of the presenters um, i think we're making for a year where we have had um, so many covid restrictions in the laboratories and it, um, and in the various labs it it has been very reassuring to see the work that our technical committees have been doing this week so we thank them again and i would like to hope that those of you that have joined us today um, can join us again tomorrow to see the presentations from our remaining uh, technical committees so thank you very much um, for for being with us today okay andreas yeah, thank you very much, Valerie. Tomorrow is the second part of this um, uh, presentation. And the day after, you can also join the uh, presentations for the ordinary general meeting, which will be held by correspondence this year due to the current situation, uh, as we cannot meet in person. Uh, so you are invited for both these sessions. And of course, if you go on the ESLA website, you will find more open committee sessions and I would also like to draw your attention to a um, meeting and a webinar together with the um, IFSS um, and ISTA on June 8. Uh, you can get more information on that on the website as well. And I think in his closing remarks tomorrow, Steve Jones will mention uh, a little bit more about that. So we, you can stay excited about further information and further things coming from Mr. Thank you very much and um, enjoy your evening, morning or night wherever you are in the world. Thanks a lot and take care. Goodbye. Goodbye and thanks. Thanks very much Valerie. Bye-bye.